In July of 1849, James White packed copies of The Present Truth into a borrowed carpet bag and walked eight miles to Middletown, Connecticut. He was taking the first steps in what would become a global publishing ministry. The publishing work was extremely effective in early Adventism, both as a form of evangelism and also as keeping a sense of cohesion amongst the believers. Prior to the Great Disappointment, it was very important. And after 1848, when Ellen White had her vision that her husband should start a magazine and that the paper would be like streams of light going around the world, the work increased in effectiveness. In 1853, the Review and Herald Publishing Association bought its first printing press and based itself out of the house that James and Ellen White rented in Rochester, New York. It then moved to Battle Creek, Michigan and continued to grow. And things would take a twist in the 1880s when James White met a young Canadian named George King who desperately wanted to be a preacher. He stayed with them for a few weeks, but James White was unconvinced that he had what it took to be a preacher. James White then approached Brother Godsmark and told him about George King and asked if he could live on the farm and work and then maybe after a year he would be able to go and preach. He was a tall and slim man and as he moved into this new home he would often preach in the living room to the empty chairs. It was soon arranged that he preach his first sermon to some of the church members, but it was a blundering failure and anything but to the point. After a season of prayer, the mother of the home stood up and said that he could never be a preacher and that he could not hold the attention of a crowd, but he could be a fireside preacher and share books and tracts in people's homes and spread the message this way. He accepted this as the will of God. And the next Monday, he packed his satchel full of magazines and took $2 and set off for the week. The next Sabbath, he was overwhelmed at how much God had blessed him and encouraged by the people he was able to speak to as well as the 62 cents that he had earned. The next week, he was able to convert nearly all the books in his bag to cash and soon persuaded the brethren at the Review and Herald to make a special book to use in the homes Thoughts on Daniel and Revelation by Uriah Smith. And so the work of literature evangelism would start with a man who James White didn't know what to do with. The work of literature evangelism would grow and spread and become a huge ministry in and of itself, key in the early days of our church as it encompassed the globe. The ministry is still active today, both with summer programs with academy-age young people and university-age students, and also with full-time workers. The story of George King teaches us that whilst we may not be able to do the exact ministry that we have set our hearts on, God may have another work for us that we haven't even thought of yet, and may use other people to guide us there. When we are humble and teachable, there is no limit to how God may use us.